What we would like to do in this video is take a look at an example of a logic function that gets implemented using either only NAND gates or only NOR gates. And we want to take a look at how to best achieve that. The circuit that we would like to implement has three input variables, x1, x2, and x3. And it is specified in terms of a, the sum of min terms, and in particular min terms 2, 3, 5, and 7. We can immediately write out that function f as being x1 not x2 x3 not, so that's the min term m2 plus x1 not x2 x3, so that uh, becomes 1 when we have a 0, 1, 1 input, so that's min term m3. Then uh, x1, x2 not x3, that's the min term m5, and then the min term m7 in the end, x1, x2, x3, that is equal to 1 if all three of the variables are equal to 1, corresponding to an input of 7 to the function. Then we apply minimization using Boolean um, algebra, and we can see, this is a particularly easy case, we can see that we can use the combining property to combine the first two terms and the last two terms. And we find that f is equal to x1 naught x2 plus x1 x3. And that is the minimal SOP form for this particular function that we would like to uh, implement here. The straightforward and or not implementation is shown uh, down here. And in this particular case, we just simply take x1 inverted using an inverter and then end it with x2. So that's this end gate up here. Then we take x1 and x3, we end those two together. That's the lower end gate. And then we or the two and that gives us our function f. And in the way how we compute uh, the cost of such circuits, we, we count the number of gates. So that's one, two, three, four. And we count the number of inputs to the gate. So that's uh, one input for the NOT gate, and then two inputs for each of the AND gates. So that makes together five. And then another two inputs for the OR gate. So that makes seven inputs. And all together, we get the total cost of 11 for the circuit. Now we would like to implement the circuit using only NAND gates. And we are going to achieve this using De Morgan's theorem. And De Morgan's theorem tells us that we can replace the OR, so in, here in the X or Y, by an AND, by taking X not ANDed with Y not, and then uh, inverting that whole result. And that is going to fit well with uh, NAND gates, because we automatically have an AND gate for the overall output, and then each of the individual inputs here is actually a two-term AND, and that gets inverted. So we get uh, x1 not x2 gets inverted over here, and then that gets ANDed with x1, x3, and inverted. That's this one over here. And then an overall inversion for that overall inversion from the Morgan's theorem. And so we actually do get that directly in the form that we would like to have for NAND gates only. To uh, emphasize the fact that we're only using NAND gates, we're actually also replacing the inverter by an NAND gate, which should simply tie the two inputs together. And um, and it becomes an inverter this way. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, just drawing it also with just showing the inverter because it's clear that we could make an inverter that way. So at any rate, um, we have here now x1, which gets inverted. We end that uh, with x2, and then we invert it through the AND gate here. And then we have the same for x1, end it with x3, and then invert it through this AND gate. And then those two outputs get ANDed together again and inverted and make the function f. And we have the same cost here. It's the same number of gates and the same number of inputs. So four gates again, seven inputs and the total cost of 11.
Now let's suppose that we only have NOR gates available and we have to implement this using NOR gates. We can use De Morgan's theorem again. Um, x and y can be replaced by uh, x not or with y not and then an overall inversion of that. So we can take here the term x1 not x2 and make it into an x1 plus x2 not and then invert it. And then we OR that together with um, x1 not OR with x3 not and invert it. So each of these two terms fits actually the NOR gate well. But we don't have an overall NOR gate here. We have an OR gate. So that means we will have to implement this using an or, uh, a NOR gate and an invert followed by an inverter. And we also notice here that we have now x, x1, x2, and x3 that we need to have inverted at the input. So here's the circuit uh, for the first part here. We have x1 or with x2 not. So we used here again this little trick of taking a NOR gate with two inputs, putting them, uh, tying them together, and then uh, making an inverter out of that. So we have x2 not here, then we have x3 not here at the bottom, and x1 not. We NOR those things together, and then we NOR the outputs of that together. And then, as we noticed, uh, because we need an overall OR here, we need to put another inverter at the output to um, make this here into an OR gate. Okay, so now we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven gates. And we get correspondingly more inputs. We have uh, three inputs from the, uh, from the NOR gates that are used as inverters. And then actually, in fact, four, uh, because we have this one as an inverter as well. And then we have uh, six more inputs from the two input NOR gates. So altogether, we have 10 inputs and the total cost now is 17, okay, as opposed to the 11 that we had before. Yeah. So the interesting question here is, can we do better? And the key to doing better is to realize that the sum of min terms is equal to the product of the max terms that have not been, with the indexes that have not been used among the min terms. So here we have three variables x1, 2, and 3. So we have uh, indexes 0, 1, 2, etc. up to 7. And we have been using the indexes 2, 3, 5, and 7 for the min terms. And so the complement of those indexes are the indexes 0, 1, 4, and 6. And it turns out that uh, the sum of min terms, which will lead eventually to the sum of products form uh, can be expressed also as a product of max terms, which then will lead to the POS, the product of sums form, with the uh, complement of the indexes here. Because we have um, an output of 1 here for 4 of the inputs, uh, this looks symmetric. We have uh, 4 for the min terms. We have also 4 for the max terms. If we had only had three, say, for the min terms, then we would get five for the max terms, etc. Altogether, there are eight indexes. If you have three variables, if you would have four variables, there would be 16 indexes, and the indexes of the min terms and the max terms would be complementary. Or to put it differently, if you put them all together, you would be counting from zero up to 15 in the case of four input variables. So now the idea with the SOP form is that we synthesize the ones. So we're going to write that here, synthesize the ones of the function. And when we do the POS form, then we synthesize the zeros of the functions. And because in binary functions, you either have ones or zeros, that's why the two um, versions here are the complements of each other. So now the straightforward um, writing out of the product of sums uh, form is um, shown here. So the, the max term for 0 is x1 plus x2 plus x3. 
So that means that if all three of them are zero, then we get the zero here. And as a result, because we take the product of those sum terms, as a result, the function f will be zero if x1, x2, and x3 are zero. So this is the max term m0. <coughs> then the max term m1 is the one here. So this one um, has to be zero when the input is 0, 0, 1. So when x1 and x2 are both zero, and x3 is a 1, and then the inversion is 0, so that term will be, one, uh, will be 0 if the input is 0, 0, 1. And then similarly, if the input is 1, 0, 0, that corresponds to index 4. We have max term 4, that's x1 naught plus x2 plus x3. And max term 6 is the term when the uh, two high order bits are 1 and the low order bit is 0, so we have x1 naught plus x2 naught plus x3. And then we can use combining again. The combining property of the Boolean algebra to recognize that x1 plus x2 plus x3 uh, ended with x1 plus x2 plus x3 naught is the same as x1 plus x2. And back here we have x1 not uh, ordered with x3, and the uh, x2 and x2 not uh, terms here are dropping out. And so the minimal, <coughs> the minimal POS form, uh, product of sums form that we are getting, is then f is equal to x1 ordered with x2, and that whole thing ended with x1 not ordered with x3. So this makes the same overall function. We just simply have focused here on generating the zeros of the function as opposed to what we did before when we were focusing on generating the ones of the function when we looked at the SLP form. Now we can use the Morgan's theorem again and we can use x and y is equal to x naught or with y naught and then the whole thing inverted and that gives us then in a straightforward manner x1 ordered with x2 and then inverted, so that's a nor, and then the second term x1 not ordered with x3 and inverted, so those are two nor terms, and then we have the two terms ordered together and inverted, so we have an overall nor as well. And the implementation looks like this now. We have x1 ordered with x2 and then inverted, so that's the upper NOR gate here that does that. And then we have x1 not obtained through a NOR gate where the two inputs are tied together, ordered with x3 and then inverted, so that's the lower NOR gate here. And then the overall NOR of, the, of those two terms is the last NOR gate here, and that gives us the function f and we can see that we now implement it just as before with using four gates, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inputs at the cost of 11, at the total cost of 11. So the key idea is that if you want to use an AND gate implementation, then you want to use the SOP form, because that will make it easy to make an AND gate implementation. And if you need a NOR gate implementation, then you use the POS form of expressing your function. And again, the SOP form that is synthesizing the ones. and the POS form that synthesizes the zeros of the function that you would like to uh, build or implement. <coughs>